Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with a reference recording. And this is a toughie. And the choice may be somewhat controversial. It's going to be rather interesting to see how you guys all, all and girls, how you guys, you people, all uh, respond to this and what your comments are. I'm very, very curious to find out. Oh, and look, because we're talking about this subject, we have Mildred. Hey, Mildred. Isn't this exciting? Yeah, you're looking forward to it, right? You are, because the work is Beethoven's... There we go. Now we can all be together. Beethoven's Mrs. Solemnis. And I know many of you were talking about this. Let's see if I do that. There we go. We're talking about this, and you all said, well, it had to be Klemperer. Um, that's the one that's got to be, probably, and that's unquestionably one of the great missas out there. It's absolutely fantastic, and it has lots of admirers, including me. In fact, I think I like it maybe even a little better than the actual reference recording that I'm going to be talking about, but but I, I don't know. I don't know. You know, the Missus Solemnis is one of those pieces which is so strange, I mean, so difficult in, in so many ways that people enjoy thinking that it can't ever be played ideally, that there is no single greatest performance, let alone a reference recording, a consensus, because no two people agree on how it should go or even what it is, what it should sound like. It's really extraordinary that way. I think it's kind of nifty, quite frankly, that Beethoven could write a work that for a couple hundred years basically has confounded everybody. It's really 200 years just, just about now, isn't it? Um, it really confounds just about everyone who attempts to play it. It's, it's, it's bigger than a perform performance can be. Um, and I think that's wonderful. It means there, we should be listening to many, many versions of it because each one will show us a different facet. But that means that coming up with a reference recording is going to be very difficult because many people don't even agree. Hey, honey. Many people don't even agree on what the best performances are. I mean, what constitutes the best performance? It's really, it's really an interesting question. I'm getting up my nerve. This is how I get up my courage. Right, sweetie? Yeah. Oh, I know. I know you like that. See, it, 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 we all feel better when you can pet your cat while you're talking about the Mrs. Solemnis. It's the kind of piece, frankly, that you should only listen to if, you're, if you have pets. They help get you through it. They really do. So what is the reference recording for the Mrs. Solemnis? It's this one. Leonard Bernstein with the Concert Cabal, um, with Edda Moser, Hannah Schwartz, Rene Colo, and Court Moll, soloists, with the Netherlands Broadcasting Foundation Chorus of Hilversum. Uh, and it's live. This was recorded in, in 1978. And I remember vividly when it came out, because, you know, 1978, I was about 17, and I really didn't know the Mrs. Solemnis very well. And I was looking for a recording. Uh, you know, I, I didn't have the Klemperer at that point. I didn't know it. Um, and I was looking for a recording. And so, like so many of you, I was in the same position that, that we're all in. I wanted the reference recording. And so I did my research. I read all kinds of reviews and things. And it turned out that the most highly recommended version um, at that time was this one. Uh, and it, since then, there have been many, many, many recordings of the Mrs. Solemnis, but it, none of them have knocked this one off its pedestal. They really haven't. And, you know, for, you know, they're the period instrument ones, some of which are exciting. The only one that really competed, I think, with Klemperer and then with this one, and Toscanini, too, actually, who did an amazing Mrs. Solemnis, um, was was the George Sell live that was in the Cleveland Orchestra box. And now it's on YouTube. You can get, you can watch it, which is astounding. Absolutely astounding. It's so astounding. So it, it almost it almost just just blew everybody else out of the water. But uh, that it's not a consensus pick. It was never f officially released um, to the general public other than as a special purchase from the orchestra itself. And now it's it's in the in the ether. It's actually on Urania too. They like stole it and issued it. It's been pirated now too. But the bottom line is, um, this is a tremendously fine Mrs. Solemnis, and it's worth mentioning because, you know, Leonard Bernstein's Beethoven is is traditionally underrated, but he really knew and understood Beethoven. His first Beethoven cycle was terrific. He recorded the Mrs. Solemnis in New York. 
also an extremely powerful performance, totally underrated. And the reason it's totally underrated is because it's it was an American production on an American label, with, you know, American orchestra and singers and Bernstein, and no one was going to give him credit for doing a great Mrs. Solemnus. But this was a work he had in his blood. Um, it really was. And so it, it does not surprise me that when he came to remake it in Europe, as he was doing, you know, with all of his Beethoven and stuff after he left Sony, um, you know, as his major label, um, he would remake this and that it would be excellent. And of course, he has the Concertgebouw, which plays gorgeously. And it's a live recording with uh, the usual, I assume, patch sessions afterwards, um, which means it's very, very exciting. Um, it's it's a little bit, um, you know, sonically, it's it's not the best. It's not bad. It's not like boxy. You don't hear coughing and hysteria. You know, it's not, it's not like that. There's nothing random or amateurish or catch as catch can about it. Nothing at all. But, um, but you know, the Sonics are good, solid live recording Sonics with good balances. Uh, and uh, I just, I just, you know, going back to it after decades, I really um, find my appreciation of it only has increased. But how I feel about it isn't really the point. I mean, I do think that it's a good opportunity to give Bernstein some credit um, as a Beethoven interpreter, because he certainly recorded this twice. How many people do two Mrs. Solemnuses? Studio recordings or, you know, official major label recordings of the Mrs. Solemnus, not many, and do it so well both times um, and, uh, you know, deserve the accolades. I mean, I, I want to make that point, but in terms of my own preferences, well, that's really kind of irrelevant because uh, I got it because I was told to get it by you, the musical world, the critics, the, the comments that I could see at that time. Um, this was quite, quite the musical event um, and an extraordinary one. And I think that, um, yeah, um, this is, this sort of is the reference. It's not as heavy or slow in places as Klemperer. And uh, it, it has, excitement. It's, it has intense spirituality, you know, where it needs to. Um, it, it's it's a, a beautiful performance of vintage late Beethoven by somebody who really gets it and gets the style. So there you go. Take it or leave it. It's the reference. I kid you not. Thank you for your assistance. I really appreciate Mildred being here and snoozing through this whole thing like the good cat she is, it always helps. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks for joining me and take care. <laughs>